Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to view this presentation, which we are recording of our 2023 Anatomical Pathology Meet and Greet session. This is to attract medical staff to the specialty of anatomical pathology across New South Wales. None of us can question the profound difference anatomical pathologists make every day to the lives of patients and their families. New South Wales Health Pathology is proud to deliver one of the most comprehensive training programs in Australia. If you are thinking about specialising in anatomical pathology, I encourage you to view this video to its completion and if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get in touch with my team. So welcome everyone to this year's uh, meet and greet for our anatomical pathology training program. Uh, my name is Michael Wiley and I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we are meeting today, the Durrig people, and pay my respects to Elders past, present and those to come. And welcome anyone of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander descent to today's meeting. It is a great pleasure to be here in person after two and a half years of uh, holding this uh, in the virtual space thanks to COVID. Uh, and it is an opportunity to welcome everyone um, to the wide range of uh, laboratories and the, the sorts of things we can provide to everyone who might be interested in a career in anatomical pathology uh, and to give you an opportunity to understand and for all of the sites that we have here to be able to present uh, why you should uh, pick them uh, and an opportunity after the end of the meeting for uh, you to talk to those who are in the room uh, who have represented their sites um, should you wish to do so. Um, I'm the good looking one that doesn't do much apart from uh, looking after everything and I'll hand over to those who actually know what they're doing in a minute but um, I just want a couple of housekeeping rules. Um, first of all the toilets if you need them out this door keep varying right and you'll see them around the back of the lecture room next to us. Um, in the event of a fire, panic uh, and follow the locals. Um, I think there's some AP trainees from Westmead here today so we'll just follow them. Hands up, thank you. Uh, and uh, you'll see we've got a camera here. Uh, we will be videoing uh, this meeting today. Almost all of the video will be of the presenters doing the presenting but it would be good just to have a, a shot of everyone in the room uh, at the beginning and the end. Um, and it is for the purposes of putting it online so anyone who couldn't make it today can listen to the presentations and have the opportunity to talk to the laboratories that are going forwards. Uh, if you have a concern, can you please let uh, Sam or Maria know uh, so that we can ensure we uh, respect your privacy. Um, and uh, I think um, we will be keeping the speakers, including myself, to time. Um, that's difficult when... <laughs> but Lisa's in charge of the timing um, uh, and uh, it would be easier to go through all of the sites and then to ask questions afterwards when you've got a chance to just have a bit of a chat so um, there's a lot to get through today um, my role I'm the chief pathologist and the director of medical services for New South Wales Health Pathology I'm the custodian of all of the trainees and all of the disciplines across all of New South Wales Health Pathology about 120 odd people uh, and it's my responsibility to ensure that you're all looked after and for anatomical pathology that is for uh, Lisa who will be coming up next um, to introduce herself. She's the training coordinator and is uh, uh, the person to coordinate all of the things that are AP uh, for all of you across the state. And Maria who was here just disappeared out the door. Uh, those of you who were here at the beginning of the year would have met Maria and Sam. I'll just ask him to stand up and wave his hands. Um, he was on parental leave but he's now back and so between the two of them they will be the key contact people uh, looking after you, your applications and uh, your employment. Uh, it's my name on the bottom of the letter. Uh, but it's them that actually do the hard work and if you've got any concerns they actually know the answers. So please uh, do not hesitate to contact them and we have a JMO email account uh, that you can use to make life easier. Um, for those of you in the program looking to move on to your second and more years, you'll know that uh, our training program is accredited by the Royal Australasian College of Pathologists and we're very pleased to have Cathy here today uh, as the uh, 
representative of the college, she'll be talking a little bit later, um, and we work very closely with the college to make your training uh, 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 as good as it can be uh, and uh, compliant with the college's training requirements uh, as an employer. Um, just to respect our right values and remind everyone in New South Wales Health that uh, we do operate within those values and I am very passionate about ensuring we respect ourselves and respect others in particular. We act with integrity and we are part of a team uh, and just remind you of that today. Um, we'd also like to welcome our private sector colleagues who are also here today to spruik their wares. Uh, that is so that when you apply for a job in anatomical pathology, you apply to the state of New South Wales and then all of the institutions rather than have to apply to all 17 or so institutions individually throughout the year. So it makes it easier and I'd like to welcome all of those who will be coming through and introducing themselves a little bit later. Uh, and um, at that point I think I'll leave mine there and uh, pass over the baton to Lisa. I've seen some of you already this afternoon but thank you um, to everybody else coming on later as well. Um, Meet and greet 2023. It is nice to be back in person. Um, this photo is from the John Hunter Lab, just as a little spruik for the John Hunter Lab. We've got a few of them uh, representing us today. So, uh, Michael and I are having a quick chat, and then we're going to hear about the RMO rotation that is available for some lucky RMOs here in New South Wales. Uh, and we're going to hear from a senior trainee talking a little bit about pathology and then Cathy from the college. So we'll whip into all of those quickly before the main, um, I was going to say evening, but main afternoon events, which is um, hearing from all, all the wonderful training facilities that we have here in New South Wales. For those who are not in pathology at the moment, and there's a few um, RMOs students around, five year training program. Um, we have lots of training positions uh, in regional New South Wales as well as plenty in Metro Sydney and we have a centralised recruitment as Michael mentioned so apply through the general JMO ad and uh, we'll receive your application and um, I guess I just wanted to say for those of you who are thinking of implying if you're if you're genuinely interested in pathology and you're a strong candidate there's a very good chance you'll get an interview a few exams to get you through the course and then at the end, I'm going to whip through those, at the end there's excellent job prospects and uh, a great work-life balance. So we encourage lots of applicants from J JMOs. You do need to have done two years by the time you start, so if you're currently in your um, second year as a, as a JMO then you're eligible to apply to start next February. Uh, we start off our new applicants with a, a one-year contract and then um, subsequently th those, those first years, many of you are here today, uh, get re-interviewed and uh, maybe offered a multi-year contract. And during that time you can rotate within, um, to different hospitals within your contract. So that works pretty well for trainees. Uh, we do often have vacancies that come up from time to time during the year. So student JMOs who are here, might be thinking about pathology, you can often slip in um, that way. It's a um, keep an eye out on the New South Wales um, JMO website and the college website. And here's a little spruik from the New South Wales Health Pathology website. So at the centralised um, point of our program is that we, we work as an institution called New South Wales Health Pathology. So you can Google that and uh, you can look, this is the training program web page that you get into when you Google New South Wales Health Pathology Anatomical Pathology Training and there's lots of useful info on that. So if you're interested in pathology that's a great place to start having a look at what, what pathology registrars are going to do and, and what the training process might involve. Hello everyone, uh, my name is Wasim and I'm a pathology registrar at the Concord Hospital. Uh, before starting my training, I had the opportunity to do two terms as a pathology, anatomical pathology RMO at the Prince of Wales Hospital. And I will be talking about the RMO terms today. So that's a photo of me being very happy as an RMO. Uh, it's a 10 weeks program. 
uh, it's 10 weeks uh, term in pathology. And it's one of the biggest hospitals in Sydney. It's a uh, it's Prince of Wales Hospital located in the southeastern suburbs, uh, you, where you get, can get exposure to um, different aspects of anatomical pathology. Um, there we they have very nice and very supportive teaching environment over there, and uh, with very helpful consultants and registrars. Uh, so I'll quickly speak about the pa classical pathway to anatomical pathology program, uh, which is uh, which we've all been to in, through. Uh, in medical school, we get exposure to a little bit of pathology. And then during internship and RMO, we usually don't get exposure to much pathology. Um, and then we start as a registrar um, and we do start our training program, um, as my previous colleagues mentioned, not knowing much about pathology. So I found the RMO term in Prince of Wales as a very nice bridging term through anatomical pathology for us to learn and get introduced to the this world of, uh, that we haven't been introduced to before in clinical, uh, uh, in clinical settings. Uh, so the main objectives of the uh, anatomical pathology RMO term at the Prince of Wales Hospital was mainly uh, introduction to the world of anatomical pathology uh, and to experience the differences between pathology and the clinical uh, specialties. Um, in addition to that, um, I was able to develop a good understanding about how specimens are processed uh, from, the, from the theater all the way to the slides and a good understanding about the skill of cut-up and um, how to manage fresh and frozen specimens. Um, in addition to good, under, good uh, experience, to good exposure to reporting and good teaching uh, opportunities including tutorials and uh, MDTs. Um, so I think this term was a win-win situation whether you decide to go into pathology, oh sorry, whether you decide to go into pathology and you're interested in pathology, you uh, get to know more about the specialty and you develop a good understanding of it and whether you don't get to uh, Get, go into pathology or you are interested in pathology but then decide not to go into pathology, uh, I believe that this term will help you understand more about the field and develop a better uh, clinician to pathologist uh, work relationship. Um, and also it may decrease the year one dropout rate for some uh, people who find that pathology is not for them. So I would like to thank everyone for listening and a uh, special thanks to Professor Davidson and Dr. Yvonne Bogan for uh, organizing the anatomical pathology RMO term and all the consultants and the registrar team at the Prince of Wales Hospital. Thank you. Thank you, Wasim. I might just say it's not just Prince of Wales that um, has pathology RMO terms, it's also Concord Hospital here in Sydney and uh, Wagga Hospital at, down at Wagga Wagga, which we have Andrew here who's currently an RMO at Wagga and you can either access that term by being an RMO at Wagga or um, by being at St Vincent's in Sydney and rotating down to Wagga. So there's a few opportunities there. Now, who's next on my, on my list? Tim. Where's Tim? Thanks for coming and speaking to us today. So Tim's one of our senior registrars uh, who's going to tell us a little bit more about his experiences. Uh, my name's Tim, um, as Lisa just introduced me. I'm a pathology registrar at, um, in my final year. Normally my home is um, RPA, but I'm currently rotating at Concord. I'm just here to tell you a bit about AP training and my experience of training so far. Um, so as Wasim mentioned, we often don't get much practical exposure to pathology uh, during med school or our junior years. Um, so just to give you a brief overview of the sort of things you're going to do as a registrar, um, there is cut-up as part of our kind of service work. Um, in, that's the macroscopic grossing of specimens for histopath. And then we also do fresh tissue triage for ancillary tests like micro or the flow cytometry. The three things in bold are the things you'll be doing more of as a consultant as well as a, re as a registrar, particularly reporting cases, but also doing frozen sections and um, presenting it to MDT meetings. Hospital autopsies are um, not common these days and the majority of AP trainees will do little to no autopsy. Uh, that's sort of mostly in the forensic realm um, these days. Just a brief um, overview of what cut up is. I recommend that you do go and watch some of this before you um, start training. 
So you get a fresh, uh, sorry, a hormone fixed specimen, for example, this skin ellipse. Um, it gets, you, you, you slice it up and then put the key sections into a tissue cassette, which is up in the top right corner. And that's your job as the registrar done. Then there are um, several further steps done by the technicians, which ends up resulting in a H and E slide, and which can then be diagnosed by you and your consultant. There are also large specimens that come through. Um, for example, this is a, a uterus, and um, obviously you can't submit all of this for histopath. So part of what you're going to be doing in your first year is learning how exactly to take um, the key blocks to make the diagnosis and all the relevant staging information um, for complex specimens like this. Oops, there we go. Just a quick overview of the five-year training program. In first year, um, I'd recommend, um, you can even do this before you start, uh, it's in April of every year, is to do the uh, basic pathological sciences exam, MCQ exam based on the first 10 chapters of Robbins, and you need to do it at some point in training, but it's best to do it early. Um, and once that's out of the way, you can spend the year learning cut up and learning the basics of reporting. Uh, second year, no exams, so please um, try to enjoy yourself. Um, uh, because <laughs> then in third, fourth and fifth year, you do have exams every year. Um, and finally, there's a portfolio at the end, which is things like teaching sessions that you've done, posters that you've presented, research you've done. So it's best to try and do as much of that early as you can. So I'd recommend trying to get most of that done in first and second year if you can, um, when, you have, when you don't have exams to think about. So I think um, AP is a bit of a hidden gem in terms of specialties. Um, it can be overlooked because people don't get exposed to it um, practically during their training and during their um, JMO years. I think it's fascinating, it's critical to patient care, especially cancer care. And it's also lifestyle friendly in comparison to other specialties. Um, for example, as an AP trainee, you will do little to no on-call or weekend work. Um, if you're into research or teaching, uh, the world's your oyster, there's, there's so many opportunities for that here. Um, and also my experience has been that the working environment is always collegial and relaxed and it's a bit different um, to how it can be on the wards sometimes. And there's also plenty of job opportunities. Um, there's currently a shortage, shortage of pathologists, there's um, probably going to be more work in the future as well. So uh, it doesn't seem like there'll be any issues with that um, when you're coming out of training. So I thought I'd um, keep things a bit balanced and put a cons list in, it's not very long, but um, uh, the, the exams are obviously very important. Um, we need to make sure that our trainees know what they're doing, um, but they are a little taxing after a while. And it's not patient facing, which for some people is a pro and for others is a con. Um, I do miss the patient contact a bit. Um, in terms of ch tips for training, I recommend you look at as many slides as you can early on, report cases actively. Um, there's a role for teaching sets as well, especially when you're preparing for exams. And exams are all digital these days, so it's um, scanned slides. And there are um, libraries, for example, on the RCPA uh, website where you can get used to looking at digital slides. Um, uh, there's another, uh, re reiterating again that portfolio items are best done in the first two years if you can. It's quite easy actually to present interesting cases as a, as a poster at Path Update, for example. And in terms of study, I would recommend reading around cases you report and about individual entities that you see rather than trying to read a textbook from front to back early on. I think it's, it's an easier way to get things to stick. Um, finally, I would recommend strongly to go visit your local AP department if you haven't, and for as long as you can just to see what, um, what work is like as an AP rep. Um, Familiarise yourself and, and see what it's like before you um, uh, apply for the uh, reg position if you can. That way there won't be any surprises. Um, if you have any questions, I've got my email address there. Please feel free to contact me, even for study resources, things like that, or um, have a chat to me after this session. Thanks. It's lovely to be here. And in particular, I'm so excited about the new prospective AP trainees in the room. I hope that we will be able to welcome you to join us next year because AP is a really, really good way to spend the rest of your life. You will be productively employed, you will be happy, and you will be learning every single day. So I'm going to just briefly run through the other aspects of pathology. The RCPA looks after all pathology practice in Australia, so you will 
will come across people in other disciplines of pathology. You might have some dealings with chemical pathologists, forensic pathologists, hematologists, the trophine is a common ground, so you will have a crossover point with them, microbiologists, many conversations about trichomonas or things like that. So you will be interacting with different fields of pathology. Now I'm just going to run through the most frequently asked questions that we are subject to. When can we start pathology training? You need to have two postgraduate years of clinical experience. So you cannot start pathology until PGY3. Is this going to change? No, it is not going to change. We require you to be well-grounded doctors coming into pathology. Remember, as an anatomical pathologist, you are first and foremost a doctor. You can't leave the doctor behind. You have to have this clinical appreciation. Now, you can also do rotations, as has been mentioned by Wasim and also by Lisa. So these are possible options to gain a, a taste of pathology. You also need current medical registration and current residence in Australia in order to start training. Now, can you get into the pathology training without any pathology background? Yes, you can, but we do suggest that you gain some information by visiting a lab. There was an older consultant who uh, got very angry when people would come to interview and had obviously never been to a lab and he said you wouldn't buy a sofa without sitting on it so why would you invest the rest of your life in a career without visiting a lab and knowing what is involved so to those of you who aren't yet on the program please do visit a lab not everybody can take part in one of the resident rotations, though if you have the opportunity, it is a very good one to take up. There's also a really useful online pathology elective that gives you a snapshot look. It's totally free, so you can hop on, have a look at pathology and what is involved. Okay, competitive program, how do I gain entry? Now, there will be a large number of positions advertised each year. There will also be a large number of applicants. We want people to be as well prepared for their interviews as possible. Please will you make your CV look professional. Some of what we see is very amateurish and if you spelt your own name wrong on the front page it's never a good omen. We also ask that you address the selection criteria. Now there will always be selection criteria for a position. Make sure that you don't ignore them. Make sure that your referees will follow through and submit the referee reports. In many of the other states I've seen applications fall over simply because the referees didn't do as they had promised to do. So do check up this is happening. And then also do well at interview. Bring your honest self to interview. We don't want you to try to show us what you think we want, we want you to show us what you are. Things that are considered favorably when we are interviewing are teaching and research in your background. In other words, you believe in what you're doing. This is what we're wanting to see. Conference attendance, there are scholarships to attend Pathology Update, so it's quite easy to get that onto your CV. Contributions to the community are valued. Visits to pathology labs, you know, I'm going round and round in circles saying this, but it is so important. It's useful if you've got the basic pathological sciences behind you. In order to prepare for your interview, know what you are aiming for. Please will you go to the RCPA website, look at the AP Trainee Handbook, have some idea of what is involved. Again, I'm emphasizing visit the lab. Attend MDTs if you can during your intern and resident years. This shows you pathology in practice and gives you a broad overview of what is happening. Act like an adult during your interview, very important. Please don't tell the interview panel that you want to do pathology because you don't like hard work. Please don't tell the interview panel that you're doing pathology to escape stress. There is no job for a doctor without stress. You have to make difficult decisions all the time. Please don't tell the interview panel that you are a concrete thinker. I have heard this so many times during interviews. In ED they said I was a concrete thinker therefore I should do pathology. No, we want lateral thinkers. We want people who can think on their feet and who can be adaptable. 
please don't tell people you're doing pathology for the lifestyle, even if you are. It's not something that lands well in an interview. And my pet personal hate, do not wear a stethoscope around your neck when you present for interview. We know you're doctors, we can prove this. Is pathology easy? Well, I think if we look at the front people in the room, the answers are definite no. There is an enormous amount to learn. Um, exams are multiple. You've got five exams minimum. Exams are difficult. They cover such a broad range. You will need to dedicate a significant amount of your own time to study. You are not given time to study in the workplace. You have to do service work and learn in the workplace. So you will need to study in your own hours. And that study never stops. Once you are a fellow, you are still going to need to study. You are still going to need to read. On the upside though, you will be supported every inch along the way. You will have people available to help you and to show you what works. Now the exam program has already been summarized but basically third year, fourth year, fifth year are definitely exam heavy. Make sure you get to know your friends and family well while you are in first and second year because you will not be seeing a lot of them thereafter. All training involves laboratory work. So you have to be happy to be in a laboratory. You have to be happy to get your hands dirty. People who leave the program usually say, ooh, I didn't realize pathology was so dirty. You know, it is dirty. You're handling human organs and tissues. They don't come sort of shrink wrapped and nice and clean. So be prepared for that aspect of it. Is there a difference in the training provided by different sites? Yes, there is. All sites are accredited for training, but each site has its different strengths and each site also lacks certain aspects of pathology practice. There simply isn't the budget for every site to be set up to do absolutely everything. We take this carefully into account when registrars are allocated into training positions. First year registrars might be spread out quite widely. Final year registrars tend to be at larger metropolitan centers, but wherever you are placed, it is going to be appropriate for your level of training. Now, you may not stay at any lab for more than four years, so rotation is mandatory. You need to be exposed to different styles of doing pathology. You know, the age old thing about different ways of skinning the cat you know you land up with the same outcome but different routes to achieve it so rotations are useful to you they're painful the computer system hates you you don't know where the cafe is they're all those painful aspects of changing but you learn so much by rotating Will I be required to go to a regional site? Possibly. Not everybody has this advantage, and I'm using the word advantage advisedly. You gain such a wealth of educational experience in regional settings. Not everybody has the opportunity. Those that do have the regional opportunity land up cherishing it. I'm looking at the people in regional settings in this room, and they are happy with their training regionally. So in New South Wales, the regional sites are Tamworth, Orange, or Wagga Wagga with most registrars spending six months of luxury in these sites. Is autopsy a requirement? No, not by the college, but it may however be required by your workplace. So if your contract of employment says you will be required to do the occasional autopsy, you can't come to the college, we will say it is a requirement of your workplace, but it is not an examinable component. Will artificial intelligence replace pathologists? Never. Pathologists have to guide and train the artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is going to be a useful tool. It might help with things like counting mitotic figures. It might help with determining how much positivity there is in an immunohistochemistry stain. It might help with other aspects of diagnosis. But notice I'm saying the word help, help, help. It's only ever going to be an adjunct. I will state categorically, I've just come back from the European Congress on Digital Pathology and Artificial Intelligence, that it will never replace pathologists. The closing session at the conference was that morthology is king. And for morthology to be king, you always have to have the pathologists. I will promote personalized medicine because now we are looking for receptors and we are looking for druggable receptors. And in this way, we are very ably treating distinct types of disease and there will also be increased use of molecular pathology and molecular pathology and immunohistochemistry the lines are now blurring because what used to be expensive tests are now being done with calorimetry methods which are a lot cheaper.
Do pathologists have a good lifestyle? Yes. Do we look relaxed? Do we work on a long time? Yes. We don't wear out like other disciplines do. We have practicing pathologists in their 80s. They are happy, they are able, they are enjoying every day and they are seeing something different every day. So the work-life balance is good. Most pathologists have long happy careers. Is formalin exposure a problem? Well, if I look at the longevity of the pathologists around me, I cannot say that formalin exposure is a problem because people go on and they work on enjoying it. We want you to be in a position where you love your job and you love your life because this is where you are happiest and you're at your most productive. Will I find a job on completion of my training? Yes, unless you are an axe murderer, you will find a job on completion of your training. There is such a shortage of anatomical pathologists. There is one state with 17 part two candidates, it's not New South Wales, and every one of those candidates already has signed a contract and everyone's just hoping that they're going to pass their part two exams. There is a, a dire need for pathologists, you will find work. Now the work will be in either public or private pathology or some people combine both practices but there are jobs out there definitely. The college regulates this very strongly. We only take in as many registrars as there are positions for. So we are constantly watching. There is a workplace survey done every year to ensure that there will be jobs. If you get onto the program you will have a job. Why choose pathology? It's fascinating, it's diverse, it's intellectually challenging. Every day is different. Pathologists are the doctor's doctors. You know, what does everyone say? We're waiting for pathology. Everybody is always wanting the pathology result. Not that pathologists are slow. And in everything that you do, you are first and foremost a doctor. You might not be touching the patient, but you are touching the patient's life in every aspect of what you do, every bit of tissue that you handle. So if you're interested what to do next, hop onto the ICPA website. There's a whole section for prospective training with useful information. In addition, the job listings are all posted on the ICPA website and furthermore there is some additional information for students and junior doctors. So thank you for your time and I hope to see you in pathology practice, those of you that haven't already seen the light. Thank you for watching our presentation. I hope it has inspired you to consider applying for our anatomical pathology training program and contributing to our life-saving work and contribution to the care and safety of patients and their families in New South Wales. Be sure to contact us with questions you may have and please take note of the application dates both opening and closing for the 2024 clinical year.